everyone from Fabulous Paper Emporium. I have got a wonderful Easter card for you today. We're using the photo play paper hop to it. And it is a Z fold style card. We just have an extra little piece at the bottom that we're going to be putting because I've got some really cute uh, decorative elements to be using on this bottom little piece. So we're just going to kind of get right to it. So um, I'll give you the measurements as we go, as per usual, and well, not maybe as per usual, but what I'm doing this time is going to be giving you the measurements as we go. And uh, yeah, so we are going to start with this beautiful blush paper is going to be our base. So we have two pieces. So the first piece is 11 by four and a quarter. And this other piece, which is going to be our bottom strip for some extra adornment, is um, 11 by one. So hopefully I said that. So bigger piece, 11 by four and a quarter. And this one is 11 by one. Okay, so we're going to start off with that. And I'll set that aside. We'll get into the scoring in just a second. And then I've got some pieces that we're going to be using to decorate the background. I love this butterfly paper. I just thought it was so happy and cheerful and spring-like. And um, we're using the back side. I was going to use the back side, but I think it was polka dot, which you could totally do. It works with the pink. I just was not feeling very polka dotty today. So um, these are the two that we're going to be using here. So for the designer paper, you're going to need two pieces. They can be the same if you'd like, <clears throat> or they can be different. These are two and three quarters by four. So you're going to need two of those pieces. And this last one is four and three quarters by four. And uh, if you wanted to have this panel be the panel where you have a little message or if you wanted to do some stamping, then you could just have that as white or another color that would easily show your message. Um, I think ultimately what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a second piece that is the same as this one. So four and three quarters by four. I'm just going to do white and have it on the back. And that's where my sentiment is going to go with my message. So um, the last little bit, well, it's not really the last little bit, but I'm saving part for later. I want it to be a surprise kind of because uh, I'm pretty excited about it. So we've got some strips to, that will cover a little bit this, um, the strip that we have at the bottom. So the first piece that we have is four and three quarters by three quarters. I'm just going to measure that really quickly. I'm pretty sure that is the case. <clears throat> yeah. So four and three quarters by three quarters inch. And then you're going to need two pieces that are, I believe, two and three quarters. Yep. So two and three quarters by three quarters, and you'll need two of those pieces. And then we're all set. So I'm going to start putting things together, but then I will be uh, bringing in some extra little pieces also from the same paper collection, and they are super cute. So I'm going to just start layering things on out, like before I put everything together, just because it um, makes for easy assembling. So I'm just going to use some liquid glue on the back. Oh, I should tell you where I scored things. Give me one second. I'm getting ahead of myself. That's because I'm so excited. It's been a while since I've done a video and I've been, you know, I've had some ideas in that I've been uh, thinking about and I've got a couple of very cool cards that I'm working on right now. So, <clears throat> rewind just a minute. I'll get my scoreboard out and show you how we scored the two pieces. Okay. So we've got our two pieces. Now, this is something I don't think I've ever used in one of my videos, but it's, it's called the, it's a, it's by Scorepal as well. So the same manufacturer as my scoreboard. Um, which we also have in store as well. So it's the score mat and it fits perfectly in 
the score board. It's all recessed, so it slides in and out. It won't move around. Everything lines up perfectly, and it's just, it is such an amazing tool to have that if you need to score, then this just comes out really simply. And then if you, when you're done your scoring, you have another surface to work on, which is easily cleaned. It's a little bit flexible. Not that that really matters. I wouldn't cut on it because I definitely want this to last. Um, so no sharp utensils on here, but nice that you have this grid pattern. So if you are wanting to center so something, um, it, it works, it works wonders. So I just thought I'd show that because I don't think I've ever used it um, in one of my videos. Okay, so with the um, 11 by four and a quarter piece, you have the 11 inches at the top and you are gonna score at three and at six. And then as how we fold this is, I usually fold it in, like fold the second score line first and then the first line, just you just fold that back and it should all line up. So it looks like so. And then with the other strip, you are going to score at five inches and at eight inches. And then you do, um, it is gonna follow the same pattern. So this is gonna lay like that. And this back piece is just gonna lay like that. And so when it folds, you kind of have this extra little area right here, which will be decorated very shortly. Okay. So I'm going to put away my scoreboard. I'm going to slow it down a little bit so that I don't get ahead of myself again. And I'm going to lay the rest of my layers down with my glue. Oh boy. I can hear the dog coming. Okay, all right, so that goes down like that. And then we have our last piece. And then I'm gonna lay down the designer paper for the base. And this works for so many different events. <clears throat> you can use any kind of paper for this, really. It really does work super well. So my butterflies are kind of going in all directions, so it's really not a directional pattern. So I'm just gonna put that on. It needs to go down before your strip gets applied anyways, because your strip is gonna go on top. So I just am having that folded so I can kind of really clearly see where that score line is and get this as centered as much as I possibly can. Do the same thing with this beautiful stripe with the lovely eggs on the back. Hard to believe that we're almost in, in April. It's crazy. Last two years certainly have been, you know, in, interesting, I guess. <laughs> Challenging, to say the least. So got a lovely stripe and then my butterflies are going to go that way. Maybe not, because it looks like the majority of them and this one are headed up. Well, not that it really matters. Butterflies can fly up and down. Okay, so just put some glue. And then we can apply our strip. But then I'll show you what, what I have planned for the decoration that is going to go on this beautiful strip. Okay, so this folds like this, really super easy card, and you can just leave it like that. We've also done a double Z fold before, which I will link um, if that is of any interest to you, which uh, is done very similarly to this one, just instead of doing a little strip at the bottom, it's a more, um, a larger panel that that follows the same Z fold. It just is uh, a lot wider than this one would be. So this one is going to be applied right to the bottom of our card. But I'm going to tell you, before we start applying this to 
my little strip to the uh, base of our card. I have taken a paper, there's a beautiful paper in here with all these bunnies. And I took the time and I fussy cut uh, five, I think, of the different scenes from this bunny paper. And so we've got our bunnies there. These are all gonna be on the bottom. So we're gonna do the longest one is gonna sit there. Then I think we might have the one with the wagon and a couple of other guys right there. But my favorite one is this guy because he's got he's on a balloon. I've cut a little piece of acetate, which is, I mean, transfer sheet is will work equally as well. In fact, that's what this is. Um, it's a bit of transfer sheets um, or transparency. Sorry, not transfer, transparency. And this measures about two, we do about two and five eighths is what this is by three eighths of an inch. So I'm gonna stick our little floating bunny on some acetate and then he is going to be floating around in this panel right here. So it's going to give kind of the illusion that he's kind of floating away um, with his balloon. So I'm going to apply the strip first before I put my bunnies on. And you just want to be mindful because you don't want to apply, obviously you don't want to apply glue to the entire strip. It's just going to be what is being attached to the bottom side. So, I mean, there's a couple of ways you can do it. If you want to flip the piece over and give yourself a little bit of a mark. So right about there. So this way I know I'm not going to exceed where my mark is unless I glue the entire page or entire card all together, <laughs> won't be able to be opened. And I'm just gonna adhere that, make sure I've got good contact. And then the last little piece, this last little panel, is the only other piece that's gonna get some glue and we're gonna glue that all the way to the far side of the bottom of our base. So this gets all glued. All right, and we put that all the way to the edge again, making sure that the, the right-hand side, the bottom side are all flush. And so it folds in nice and neatly. It will fit into um, an A2, um, envelope so that's perfect there as well and then we are going to put our little bunnies I'm entertaining here putting in if I should put a strip of foam tape to have that even further elevated I think I'm going to do that so I'm going to grab some foam tape my large foam tape I'm realizing right now because I wanted it out of the way is actually on the bar where I have my setup. So I can't, I can't exactly reach for it right now. Um, but I also need something that is going to be narrow enough. Mm -mm -mm. Foam tape, foam tape. Okay. I've got a couple of different options here. I think this one might be okay. Oh, that one's a little bit on the thicker side. So this one is a really super thin uh, foam tape. I think it's probably a quarter of an inch if I'm not mistaken. Let's see. Yep, quarter of an inch. All right, so this is just gonna go all the way at the bottom. And scissors. Perfect. Okay, so this guy is going to go right at the bottom. Okay, backing is, that was weird. Backing was kind of ripping as I was taking it off. 
And I'm gonna get him, these two guys centered. So cute. Okay, so they're gonna stand right there. I'm taking my acetate. So my acetate is gonna go on the back side of the strip. And I wanna make sure that I've got room enough for the bunny, obviously. So here's what I'm gonna do. So I'm actually gonna stick, glue the bunny down to the acetate first, and then I can be sure that I am putting the acetate strip in a place where the bunny is not gonna extend. You don't want it, I don't want it to extend past this edge of the card because then it's not gonna fit in the envelope that I would like to have it go in. So, perfect. So I think he's gonna go probably right there. And that way when it's all said and done, he is well within the confines of our card. That's perfect. Okay. So I'm gonna put some, some glue right on the bottom of the acetate and slip that right back in here where I had him. So making sure that, I don't wanna press it down too much because I also don't, I also wanna make sure that, yeah, the, yeah, that's fine. Just wanted to make sure that the glue wasn't, oh, that looks so cute when it's standing up. That is the cutest thing. I love using acetate for those kind of things. And that's what I was saying, like this card could easily be used for um, like a birthday. So if you had balloons all kind of cut out, you could stick those on top of acetate and have them at all different levels all across this, this strip before you apply it to the card. And if you have um, the balloons in behind, then you're good to go. Okay, so the next thing that I wanted to do is apply them to the inside. And the fact that the strip is the same length as the base of the card means that you can lay it down pretty much flat and uh, apply your other little um, cutouts if this is what you're wanting to make. So I'm going to do the same thing with this little guy. I'm not applying any more foam tape because that just will add to kind of the bulk of the, of the card. I really like it for the front. So I'm going to put him right there or her. And then I've got two more little bunnies. One that's Definitely got his face firmly planted in the basket with all the treats. And then we've got our second one who kind of has like a very, I don't know, I kind of read it as surprise, but <laughs> maybe not. Kind of like, what's my guy doing? And she's she that's definitely a girl a, a girl bunny because they've got like oh maybe they're all i was gonna say for sure because they've got little, little flowers in their hair but then they, i think they are mostly girl bunnies anyhow so that is the completed card we've got a very cute card if if i do say so myself um but yeah so again could be used for a number of different occasions. It comes together super quick and super easy. Fits into an A2 uh, envelope, so no extra postage needed either. Um, I just, I love this card. <laughs> so uh, I wanted to thank you so much for joining me today and hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe or the bell so you get notifications every time we post a new video. Thanks again for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Hopefully you have a fantastic day and you stay safe and well. Thanks again. Bye.